Hi everyone, um, it's Ian Brown again, um, all the way from Australia. And um, like we do always, welcome back to the people who have been following me for the last few weeks and welcome to the people who might be new for tonight. Um, sorry, I know it's morning over there, it's actually evening over here in Australia. So over the last few weeks, just as a really quick catch up, we've been doing lots and lots of um, creative arts activities and things that are suitable for your child, things that you might be able to do in your home, um, because in these very strange times that we've got, we're spending a lot more time in our houses. Um, and I've designed um, some activities so that we can do them either inside or outside, but not far from home. Um, today, what we're going to do is follow a similar sort of format. What we're going to have is um, three, three sort of sections within the next hour. Um, one of them is going to be um, about the elements and principles of design, and I'll talk about those in a moment. Um, and that's to give you some background knowledge and some ideas and things that you might be able to use with your children. Um, and so that you've got a, a bit of an understanding about what the basics of art are. The second part of it is, um, like I've done every other week, is that we've tried to give you some practical activities that you might be able to use with your children. Um, easy things to do and emphasising today on that whole idea of communication, which is something that we've talked about over the few weeks that we've got. And then finally, our Voices of Children um, project, which is the one where we're actually collecting images that your children have been taking. Um, and we're going to actually talk about that. But more than um, just talking about the images today, what we're going to do is I'm going to actually talk a little bit to you about um, identity and what does that mean for your child? Um, and what does identity and culture mean if we're actually going to incorporate that into the project? So it's going to be quite a packed in day um, and hopefully you'll get lots and lots of ideas that you might be able to work from. So let's start. Um, the, the description that we gave you to, that sort of talked about what was going to happen today said that um, do you understand what some of the terms that are, are, are about art education? Um, is there some jargon that you don't quite understand? I mean there are some very basic things that most people do understand such as colour um, but there might be some other things that you, you just need to brush up on. Well, how do you actually talk to your child about some of those concepts? Or then how do you actually incorporate some of those concepts? Um, and then one of the things that I have been pushing week after week is the whole idea of using some artist's work and using some real artworks to actually um, motivate your child and to encourage your child to actually um, do some creative responses with it. I really like the idea that whenever you're going to do some things is that you actually find some type of artist's work that you can actually talk to your child about. And it doesn't matter how um, young your child is. It doesn't have to be, you know, it's not very, um, your child doesn't have to be very old to be able to understand the concepts of what an artist is and the sorts of things that they do. But often what I've been talking about is that, you know, how do you communicate with your child and what sort of concepts should you be talking to them about? And so that's where we're going to focus on today, because what we're going to talk about is what we call the elements and the principles of design. Now, they, they are the sort of foundation of what art education is about, and they're the foundation about creative responses and the sorts of things that your child will do. And as I said, you know, some of them are very basic. For example, colour is a... Um, is, is something that we all understand. But then again, something like balance, what does that mean? Or how do you actually talk to children about those, those concepts? So I, I thought what's important is that we, we actually get a common understanding of the concepts first um, and, and try to build up your knowledge, not necessarily your children's knowledge, but your knowledge to start off with, to get some ideas. And especially if you're taking your child to on a, you know, into a gallery and you're actually looking at artworks. What sort of questions do you ask them? What, what sort of things do you talk about when you're actually standing in front of that artwork? So I'm gonna show you just the, uh, what I've got is a series of little videos and some of them repeat some of the concepts um, because what it is is that often when you're looking, if you, if you Google the term elements and principles of design, that's the foundation for art. 
but you will find that sometimes when you Google that, you get different ones. You get the same basic seven, and then you sometimes there's 11, and sometimes they just add a couple more on or whatever. But color, tone, color, light, tone, texture, shape, form, and pattern um, are some of the ones that is just the common ones that we will talk about. So let's have our first video, and it's called The Elements of Art for Elementary Students. The elements of art are the building blocks of an artwork. They are the tools that an artist uses when creating an artwork. The elements of art are line, shape, color, space, texture, and value. Line. Line is the path between two points. Here you can see two points. When you connect them, you have a line. There are many different types of lines, such as straight, wavy, zigzag, and loop-to-loop. -loop. Shape. Shape is a two-dimensional area closed by a line. Here you have a line that looks like a circle, but it is not a shape yet because the ends are not connected. When the line closes, it becomes a circle. Geometric shapes are the ones that you might see in math class, like circles, square, triangle, star, or hexagon. Organic shapes are ones that you might see in nature and are usually rounded. Color. Color is the way we describe an object by the way it reflects or absorbs light. When light hits an object, we see the color of it. For example, when light hits this apple, we see that it is red. We use the color wheel when talking about color in art. Color can be separated into families, like the primary and secondary colors, or the warm and cool colors. Space. Space is the way that things are arranged in art. Space is used in many different ways. One way is when we talk about the background, middle ground, and foreground. The background is in the back, the middle ground is in the middle, and the foreground is in front. To make something look far away, you can draw it smaller. To make something look closer, you can draw it bigger. This is called perspective. Another way to use space is to overlap objects. Here, the fruit all look next to each other, but here, the fruit overlaps and you can see that the orange is in front and the pear is in back. Texture. Texture is the way that something looks or feels. Here you can see that the cactus has lines drawn on it to make it look prickly. The berry has rounded circles to make it look bumpy. The syrup is drawn to be dripping over the pancakes and white is added to make it look shiny and sticky. The koala is drawn with zigzag lines to make it look fluffy and soft. Value. Value is the range of dark to light. When you add black to a color, it's called a shade. When you add white, it's called a tint. Here are all the elements together again. I hope this helped you learn about the elements of art. Okay. So that's there. The, you'll notice that in that little short video, they talked about six elements for art. Um, and they are the basic ones that you would have. And like I said, the, 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 the next couple of videos that we might see, you might actually see them expanded slightly. If you tried to Google um, elements and principles, what happens is that they, they talk about the elements of art and then they talk about the principles of art. And quite often they will put those two things together so they refer to them as the elements and principles of design. Um, but if you think about it, um, some of those things are very, very simple sorts of um, concepts that you can talk with very young children about. For example, you know, the, in that video, they talked about two dots. When you have a dot and another dot, and then that dot is joined together, then that becomes a line. And I think I talked about this, you know, right back in our, probably our first one, is that when you actually have a line, if you have a dot and a dot, and it's joined by a line, if you take that line around like this, and the actual line joins up, then what you've got is a shape. And then that's very simple for children to understand. So you take a line for a walk, it comes back around, it joins, and then you've got a shape. And if you've got one shape, and then you go and put another shape, and then you go and put another shape, then what you've actually got is a pattern. So shapes form patterns. 
and they talk about shapes in in that video as being um, either organic shapes or um, shapes which are very geometric. So things like a square, which young children can actually recognise, they can recognise circles and they can recognise squares, and, they, and you, they're what we refer to as geometric shapes. And quite often in artworks, they will have geometric shapes within the artwork. But then again, if you don't have a very formalised shape, like a circle or a square, you have what's called an organic shape. And that shape can then, you know, so a lot of um, contemporary artworks or a lot of artworks that you see have organic shapes in it. And they're, they're not very tight um, in that particular way. So the other ones there, which I would pick up on with younger children is the idea of color. And they love na naming their colors and they like the idea they have favorite colors. Um, and they, they might have colors that they can actually name. They can know that one's red and they know that one's blue and they know whatever. But if you actually um, unpack what color is about, there's only three colors. Um, and the three colors are red, blue, and yellow. Now, why are they special? Well, they're special because no other color can make red. You can't put two colors together to make red. You just have red. You can't put two colors together to make yellow because yellow is always yellow. So you don't combine colors to make yellow. And there's, you can't combine colors to make blue. But they're called primary colors. And what happens is that those primary colors can then mix together. Just those three colors can mix together to make what we call our secondary colors. So in other words, yellow and red will give you orange. Blue and yellow will give you green. So these are the really, really simple concepts that you might want to talk to your child about. And you might want to do some color mixing and see how we go with that one. Now I'm going to show you another one, which reinforces exactly what I've been talking about and exactly what the first one was about. The first one was quite a simple um, video, which just sort of you would use with, you know, primary aged or elementary aged children. Um, this is a bit of a fun one, and we're just going to watch the next one, which is called The Elements of Art, J.C. Crowell. The seven essential ingredients, building blocks for artwork are the seven elements of art. Line, shape, value, texture, color, space, form. We're going to use different tools to make them today. Pencils, an eraser, colored pencils, scissors, paper, and glue, and the back of the paper for notes. So let's get started with the elements of art. The first one being line. Line is a path of a moving point through space. A point is just a dot. It has no dimensions. However, we can think of it like moving a couch around with a friend is that a line traces the path of that point as we move it. So we might go horizontally, left to right. We might go vertically, up and down. You might even draw a diagonal line going both ways. A zigzag going up and down the stairs, curvy as you drop it down the stairs. Jagged lines, dotted lines, dashed lines, spiral lines. These all have endpoints. These are lines that trace the path of a single point through space. In the first box, go ahead and draw at least five different lines, thick, thin, but a variety of lines that then we can use to create our next element of art, shape. A two-dimensional, two dimensions is flat, flatter than even this piece of paper, closed area that is defined by other elements of art. Circles, triangles, squares, these are geometric, mathematically defined shapes. Teardrops, lakes, these are all organic shapes we might find in nature. Either way, a shape is not simply a line, it's a closed space. Next, we're going to talk about value. Value is not money, it is the lightness or darkness of an object. And to create that, we have to use different tools. This pencil is an HB pencil. It's about middle hardness or softness for lead. There are different types of drawing pencils with different types of lead. 2B, see how it's darker. 2H, gets a little bit lighter. 4H, even lighter. B means softer, it creates darker lines. H means harder, it creates lighter lines. Either way, you're gonna create a value range. And we're gonna to try to make a rectangle, not a little tornado. So start pressing harder and then getting lighter and lighter. You can use different pencils to experiment, going from dark to light, but don't make that squiggly little tornado where you can't even see it. So in this box, create a nice value range, going from dark to light, using different types of pencils and different types of pressures to create that nice value range from dark to light, light to dark. Next is color, an element of art derived from reflected light. We're going to start with our primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. These create all the other colors. And starting at the top, for no reason. You can start with whatever color. We're going to start with red. But start with red, then blue, and make a triangle with yellow. Next, we're going to pull out our secondary colors, orange, green, and violet. 
Yellow and blue mixed to green. Red and yellow mixed to orange. And blue and red mixed to violet. And these create all the other colors, but they have to be in this order or it's not correct. Texture. Let's look at this table. It looks like wood, rough wood, but it's soft. Texture can be real or implied. And we use the elements of art to create that texture. So here we can create a grassy texture using different pressures. Here we can create a concrete jagged look using different dots. We can create a smoother look using value. Whatever kind of texture you want to create, you can create it or you can create real texture. Let's talk about space, not outer space. We're gonna talk about space, the emptiness or area between, around, above, below, or within objects. Create a box around this definition. Connect like corners. Then we can use the elements of art to create different objects, different lines, different colors that create depth in this space. It makes it look three-dimensional, but it is not three-dimensional yet. This is just a flat drawing on paper. But then we have a form. This paper, it's three-dimensional. It's not as flat as you might think it is. But a form is anything that has three dimensions, height, width, and depth. So take the paper, cut it up, glue it together, stick it on the paper. As long as it sticks out from the paper, you've created a form. So let's go ahead, clean up, put away your supplies. We've talked about these seven elements of art, line, shape, value, texture, color, space, and form. You can use these now to create any amazing artwork you want to. Okay, so there's, that's, you'll notice with that one, the, the first video, we talked about six elements um, of art. And then we had the second video and it has seven elements of art. So this is what I mean, it depends on what, what you look at. The basic ones are probably the first six. And then after that, you know, people just keep adding little bits and pieces to it. But they are the building blocks or the foundation of art. So you can actually take um, an artwork and you can you know when we work with um, secondary students you know students at high school what we do there is we actually get them to deconstruct a painting using the elements and principles so it's a very formalist way of actually understanding it and they might be the things that you would use some of those things when you take your child to the gallery and you have a wander around the gallery and you have a look stand in front of a painting and actually look at it and quite often parents will say to me, well, you know, but what do I talk about with my child when I take them to a gallery? Because quite often you'll see other, you know, adults will walk into a gallery, they'll stand in front of a painting and they will look at it for about less than a minute and then they'll move on to the next one and then they'll stand and look at it for less than a minute and they'll move on to the next one. So, you know, you don't have to do that with your child, children. You could actually have a bit of a treasure hunt through the gallery and you could actually look for things like colour. You know, can we find all the paintings in this room that have got red in them? Or what colours can you actually see in that painting? Um, and then you could work into lines. Now, that was really interesting because like I said, every week I, I talk about how important it is for you to um, communicate with your child and to sit and talk and discuss these things. Well, it would be really nice to even just to focus on line. I mean, that's, a, that's an interesting one that most people don't do. But if you were working with children, you, if you think about what that, the, the person in the, the video was talking about, he was talking about lines as being um, thick lines or, you know, he was using, HB pencils as opposed to a 2B and a 3B and a 6B. Um, and there, the, the, I, I talked a few weeks ago about the idea of, you know, when you're using pencils, to use nice dark pencils with, with children because the light pencils, a HB pencil is very hard. Remember I said H was for hard and then um, the other one, you know, a 6B pencil or a 3B pencil is very dark. And they're what children probably need to use. They're much softer. Um, so they're not going to scratch as much um, and they will get nice bold drawings that will sort of stand out. So, so think about that. But if they're doing a drawing, talk to them and say to them, all right, what sort of line is this one? Oh, that's a thin line. You know, have you got any other thin lines on your drawing? How about we do a thick line? How do you do a thick line and, and do it nice and strong and make it nice and thick? And then if that's the case, you know, they don't always have to be just drawing thin lines. They could then, you could say, all right, let's see what a curvy line might work, look like, or what does a wavy line might look like. So there's lots and lots of different vocab that you could be using with your child 
um, to build up. And, and what you're trying to do at this point, this is why we communicate with um, children, is we're trying to actually build their vocabulary up. They start off with one you know, monosyllabic um, statement, which is just one thing that they da, da, da. And then as they're going on, we're, we're repeating words for them. And they're building up. They don't just, they don't get a dictionary and have a look at it and say, all right, you know, here's the, the hundred words for today. They get those hundred words for the day from you when you're actually talking to them. So could you imagine how good it would be if you're actually talking about, you know, an artwork or their drawings, and then you've suddenly got, you know, thick line. You've got the, the concept of thick, the concept of thin, you've got wavy, you've got curvy, you've got you know, sharp lines, all of these different things that you could actually do. And then they could actually be drawing some of those things and you turn it into a game. You know, let's draw, how many thick lines can you draw in this drawing? Or let's do thin lines in this drawing. Or let's colour in and decorate and do things like that. So that's a bit more interesting than just sort of doing it in that way. You'll also notice that in that um, video, they talked about form. Now form's an interesting one because what you've got with form is that you Form means it can either be two-dimensional or three-dimensional. And three-dimensional, sorry, form is three-dimensional. So if you were taking you know, a, a, a child into a gallery and looking at things, a painting is actually classified as a two-dimensional artwork. But something like a sculpture is a three-dimensional artwork. And when I talk to children, I don't try and, you know, I, I, younger children, I, I talk about 3D or I talk about 2D, and then I say to them, well, how do you know that one's 3D? And they will, they'll say, oh, well, I can walk around it. And they, so they get the concept in their head, the difference between a three-dimensional object and a two-dimensional object, something which is flat. Now, I know that, you know, there's a, there's a discussion about whether a painting is, you know, the paintings behind me have actually got depth because they've, they've been framed. But we generally talk about, you know, artworks as being two-dimensional or, you know, being flat on the wall, or three-dimensional is something that we can actually walk around. All right, so I'm going to move on. So they're, they're the, what we refer to as the elements of design. But when you Google it, you will probably find that it comes up as the elements and principles of design. So what I would like to do is show a very short video now, the next one, which is about the principles of design.
Okay, so what we've now looked at was the first video had six elements, and then the second video had seven elements, and now this video has got eight principles. Now these, these principles are probably too difficult. I've, I've, I've included these in here because I think it's good for parents to actually get a bit of background knowledge about what these might be. They talked about balance and alignment, emphasis and proportion, movement, and I call movement direction, um, pattern, contrast, and unity. But they're things that artists actually use when they're constructing artworks. Um, you know, and, and you can actually, you yourself, you know, this might be a hard one for, for, for younger children to, to sort of pick up. But certainly for a parent's point of view, if you're trying to increase your knowledge and your understanding about how art works and how you can actually unpack or um, deconstruct an artwork. Um, when I work with most university students, you know, we talk about deconstructing an artwork in a particular way. In other words, unpack that artwork to be able to um, find what those elements and those principles are and why they work and why they don't work. And quite often what will happen is that you, you know, you, you can walk into um, a gallery or you can look at something that you go into a shop to buy a piece of artwork for your um, wall. And you will say, you'll look at it and you'll think, oh, that's really nice. I like that piece of work. And then you'll look at other ones and you'll think, oh, I don't, mm, I'm not sure about that one. But, and often what you're doing is you're making those judgments about how you buy your art. And it depends on the elements and the principles that the artists have included. For example, you know, there's, you know, some people don't like, you know, they, they like quite subdued, um, mellow sort of colours. Um, and so colour determines, you know, my artworks that I actually paint because I'm a painter. They're, they're quite modern and they're quite um, contemporary and they're splashing and I do quite large splash type work. So you can see the ones over on the wall here are very contemporary. There's no subject matter to them. It's all about the, the mark making and how, how I actually put things together. But, you know, you can actually walk in and you think, what is it about that artwork that works or what is it about that artwork that doesn't work? And often it will be things like, you know, you know, if it's the alignments out, if it's a bit funny because it's, you know, it's too top heavy on the right hand side of the painting compared to the left hand side of the painting, that maybe has something to do with it. Or if there's a bit of a direction thing happening, your eye will actually follow it. Now they're, the, they're things simple, you can simplify the concepts for young children to ask them about which way does your eye look or when you look at that painting, what stands out and quite often it will be the sun or the colour or whatever it might be. And that's when they're referring to emphasis, something in the painting that jumps out at you. And quite often it will be something that will make your eye go to that top point of the, the painting, the centre of the painting or the bottom of it. And it could be that the way the artist has, you know, structured it so there's some direction for your eye to go there. But then on the other side of it, maybe just that the colours are bright and colourful. Um, you know, there's a lot of research about at the moment about, um, you know, what colours do young children like? And it's quite interesting because, you know, we, we tend to do babies' nurseries in very pale pastel shades, you know, and, and very calming sorts of things. Um, and then often when you go into an elementary classroom, they will be very bright and colourful sort of things. But in actual fact, some of the research has found that, um, that just great primary colours, yellow, blue and yellow, um, red, sorry, red, blue and yellow, are, you know, those three colours are the ones that children are attracted to more than some of the other colours. Um, and so it, it just varies. And you, you will know your child and what they would like and which ones they will pick out. You know, it's a fun activity to sort of put down, you know, six paintings in front of them and ask them to select one that they think is the, that they like the best and just see whether they're actually choosing that from colour or are they choosing it from because of the um, what's on it? Is it the image that they like? Is it the character that's in it? Whatever it might be. It doesn't have to be a cartoony type thing. Quite often children don't go for that type of thing. Um, and quite often children will just like something which is slightly higher than their developmental level. Um, so that makes it interesting as well. And quite often that's why um, paintings like Picasso's paintings are really, really popular with preschool children 
But, you know, and Picasso said that, you know, it took him a lifetime to be able to draw like a child. Um, and quite often you will put down um, artworks and, and the child will actually go for the Picasso because to them it's not much further along the continuum than the sorts of things that they're producing themselves. Obviously it's not, it's much more complex than that. But they see it as being something that they can actually achieve and something similar. So that's a very, very basic introduction to the elements and principles of design. And as I said, you know, there's not a, there's not a set number um, that you do, but there are certainly, you know, things like color and shape and line and pattern um, are, are very basic ones that will appear in anything. So I would suggest that if you need, want to find out more information about this, all you have to do is Google that term, um, elements and principles of design. Now, today's quite connected in some ways because what, what I've done is um, the artwork that, I, that I'm going to present to you now, sorry, the art activity or the creative activity that you can do with your young um, person at home, very much fits the whole concept of the elements and principles of design. Um, and, and it's a nice creative activity to do. And like I said, I always like to use some sort of artist. So it's this, this activity is an artist inspired activity. And what we've done in this one, you'll, it'll be interesting, is that um, again, because I don't have um, access to early childhood centers at this point, um, and I'm, each week I'm using either a friend's grandchild or my grandchild um, and, and getting them to do some of the activities um, just to show that they actually work. And so what we've done this week is I've taken an artist. Now, the artist is one of my favourites, um, and his name is Andy Goldsworthy. Okay, and Andy Goldsworthy is a, a British sculptor. And what I've done is on the worksheet, um, you know, I always put a worksheet out every week. Um, the worksheet talks about Andy Goldsworthy and, and the sorts of things that he does. Now, like I said, I like to actually work with real artists and um, that way you've got something that you can actually communicate and discuss. And so what, what I did with my granddaughter was, we looked at Andy Goldsworthy's work and I had this book and, and there's just some lovely things in here. You'll see her working with it, but he just uses found objects, stones, sticks, leaves. Um, he, because he's from the UK, he uses ice. Um, this is made from ice. He, he uses sticks and twigs and whatever. But he also works in the desert as well. So you don't need to have, you know, the, the video I'm going to show you now is my granddaughter. Um, and watch where, where she is, that she lives on, the, um, on Sydney Harbour. And you'll actually see her in her backyard. Her backyard actually, she climbs down a ladder in her backyard and it goes right down to the harbour. Um, and it's, it, it's just a beautiful space, but at the back of it, it's a very natural space. So we went to a park, first of all. The process was we went to, we looked at Andy Goldsworthy's work, and talked about what, what and my wife went with us as well. And she sat and she talked to Riley about the, what, what could she see and what sort of patterns does he use and what does he like and, um, and et cetera. And then we collected a few um, leaves and things from this little park and then we went back to her house. So what I'm gonna do is we, we might have the, um, the first MP4 this video that I put together about my granddaughter going on her hunt for um, making some Andy Goldsworthy sculptures. What do you notice about this image? To me, it looks like the trunk of the tree is glowing where it hits the earth. This was created by the British artist Andy Goldsworthy, and it's made entirely out of leaves that he collected. The 
Andy Goldsworthy is a sculptor working directly with land and material he finds on land, like sticks, petals, ice, mud. In this example, he painted this moss-covered tree with black mud and rocks, like these rocks that transition from light to dark. Andy Goldsworthy goes out into nature to make his artwork. He uses only things that he finds and collects to assemble these works of art. His artworks are made in a day and he knows that they won't last. He always takes a photo so that he can preserve the artwork that way and share it with other people. Although Andy Goldsworthy has traveled the world to make his art, including creating artworks at the North Pole, he says that the most important place to him is his home and the natural landscape surrounding his home. I want you to create a land artwork near your home. We all live in different types of environments. Some of us are surrounded by more nature than others. You may have a yard, you may not. You may have a balcony, you may not. You may be able to take a walk around the block and you may not, that's okay. Notice that if you look closely, nature does appear even in places where you might not expect it. If stone, wood, leaves, flowers, and ice aren't available to you. Let's think about what we could create using water. Andy Goldsworthy created both of these pieces on city streets using water. I have an idea. After making my water artwork, I walked around my yard to see what other kind of items I could collect to make a piece of land art. I don't have grass, but I have a lot of rocks and a lot of leaves. If you search through the leaves too, you'll find little balls, acorns, and sticks. After thinking about it a little bit, because I have so many leaves, I decided to create something out of different colored leaves that I found on the ground. I also added some sticks and a few rocks. Here's what I made. Odyssey artists, I really want to see your land art. So go make something, take a picture of it, and email it to me at nicolec at ocsmail.org. I'll post it on the OCS Art Blog at www.ocsartblog.wordpress.com. Okay, so there, that's a, a brief introduction to Andy Goldsworthy, and you could see the types of things that he actually puts together. Um, very, very simple ideas. But what I'd like you to think about is, if you think about what the first half an hour of this um, webinar was about the elements and principles of design. And if you look at some of the things that Andy Goldsworthy does, it's very much about those elements and those principles. For example, that lovely circle of stones, which actually went from a black circle, then it went to white stones, and then it went to gray stones, and then it went to black stones. And those, he'd actually sifted those stones, you know, and separated them, categorized them into those colors to actually get that lovely gradation of color moving out. So it was exactly like the tonal idea um, where you're actually adding white to a colour. Remember that one of the videos talked about tones and tints. One is a tone and one is a tint. One where you add white to a colour and one where you add black to a colour. The other thing that he uses quite a bit and that it stands out, and one of the little one that we'll sh I'll show you where I work with my granddaughter, is that he uses a contrast of colour. Now, contrast of colours is something where you have a splash of colour, which
which is quite different to the others. So in other words, you know, he, he does things in, you know, dark, and then all of a sudden he will just have a bright, bright leaf that actually your eye is drawn to. And so that, that's important. The other thing that he does is he uses shapes. So in other words, he uses circles or his, you know, his sticks and twigs and things like that. He actually uses them in a particular way to form different shapes. So he has circular shapes and then he has organic shapes. And then quite often there's a, a direction. So, you know, even he, when he does things with um, the, the roots of a tree, he will have it so that your eye will follow that direction in a particular way. So just, you know, just if you had six photographs of Andy Goldsworthy's work, you will look at those and you could look at one of them for colour, you could look at one for shape, you could look at one for line, you could look at one for contrast. Um, all of those, one that's about emphasis, and all of those things are just what makes your eye go to look at that sculpture. And it's really interesting because that last video, she talked about how Andy Goldsworthy, he, they don't last because he only does them for one day. You know, it might take him three days to set it up. They're probably only going to last for one day and it's either going to melt or it's going to blow away. Or, and so what he does is he photographs that. And that's what I want you to do is that I want you, if you're going to do an activity like this with your child, photograph it so that you can preserve it just the same way he preserves his. So let's have a look at the next one. And I think that this one might be the um, one with my granddaughter, we'll wait and see. Um, we'll have the next one. Um, yes, no, we'll try it again. If not, I've got it here on my computer. This is one that I've put together. Um, no, not the seventh, the sixth. Try that one. That was the one, the one that you started to show was the one that we want. Yep. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can get it up here. Do you, do you uh, Harry? Uh, oh, okay then. 10 seconds, something's wrong there. Let me just see if I can get it here then and I'll share my screen. Sorry, everybody. Let's see if we can get this one working. Hopefully mine lasts longer than six seconds. Let's share the screen. Let's go to that one and we'll share. Oh, I see, it does only last for six seconds. All right, let's go back to here. Okay, let's try this one.
Sorry, everybody, it's coming. <gasps> Okay, we'll try it again. Thank you. 
Well, I hope, hope, hopefully, I can't tell from this side, but hopefully you were able to um, see that video and see the sorts of things that she was doing. Um, I'm just presuming you did, so I'll just keep talking a little bit. And what we did in that video was um, great. I've just got it all okay, so that's fine. Um, what we did in that video was that you'll see that that was her backyard, um, and she lives in a beautiful part, and she just collected bits and pieces. But the inspiration that she had was looking at the book about Andy Goldsworthy. It was talking about the colours that he used. And, you know, I said to her, oh, you're building a flower. And she said, no, 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 I'm building a sun. Um, so she had an idea of what that was going to look like with the radiating wood and bits and pieces. The little orange flowers that we got are just, they're just a weed, um, nasturtium, like a, like a, um, a herb. Um, they grow on the side of the road. So we just collected those. Um, and there was a really, really nice bright colored contrast um, to look at that one. So what, what I would like us to do, um, I'm, because we're running out of a, a time at the moment, I was going to talk to you a little bit about identity, um, but I won't do that until next week now, um, because then we've got a, a bit more time to actually thrash it out and explore some of those concepts. But what I would like to talk to you about today is, um, we, is just in these last couple of minutes, I'm going to share my screen again, and I'm going to, first of all, open up um, the worksheet. So if I go to here and then I share my screen, there we go, good. Um, this is the worksheet that's actually up for you guys at the moment. I'll just move that a bit. Um, and it talks about the whole idea of the elements and principles of design. And there you'll see some photographs of Riley working on her things. You'll see that the um, Andy Goldsworthy, there's a little bit about here about um, him and about what he does. And then here we've got some pictures of the sorts of things that we came up with. And here are the basic elements and principles of design of line and color, shapes, space, texture, balance, and pattern. Now, just from that little activity that we did, it's really, really easy to talk to your child about line um, and, and what, what lines might look like. Now, if you look at his, she's got this lovely curvy line here. If you look at Riley's work here, what you've got is just some straight lines. Then we talk about colour. So we're talking about orange um, and the sorts of flowers that we're using. And how do you make orange? Well, you could actually mix two of the primary colours together. Red and yellow will make orange, that nice bright colour that's there. We can talk about shapes. These are radiating shapes. The sun has radiating shapes. Um, and that's what she could see when she was actually building this one herself, where I thought it was a flower, it turned out to be a sun. Um, we can talk about space and the shapes that are around. We could talk about texture. Most of the stuff that she was working with was quite rough texture, apart from the flowers, which were quite smooth. And if you look at this one, there's a lovely contrast between smooth and rough here. So there's two more concepts that you could be introducing. And then the biggest one would have to be um, both balance and pattern. If you look at this, this is a symmetrical, you know, you can divide this, her, her design, and that was her design, you could divide it into half and it's completely symmetrical. You could even, just, you know, cut the, the, the um, final one in half and you've got symmetry as well. And then what's happening is that she's got a repeat of patterns. So if we go to our, our voices, you know, we've got a couple of minutes left. If we go to our voices of children now, um, these are the things that we've been wanting you to collect over the last few weeks. So if you haven't done them yet, now's your chance to go and do it. And what will happen is that this week, somebody will send to you an invitation with a link. And the, the link will have where you actually upload your images to the Voices of Children project. Now they can be all of these, so in other words, you could take one from every week, or if you didn't want to, and you only wanted to send one or two, then that's fine. Or if you've just arrived today and you're just going to have a go at some of these, um, you know, these natural environmental designs like we've been doing today, then you could send a picture of that. 
but the link will give you, um, the email link will give you a place where you can put your child's name, you can um, put your email address, and you can choose what images are going to go up there. And then what we're going to do in the future is we're going to have a big um, gallery exhibition where we're going to actually select some of those images. And some of those images will come together for a nice little exhibition at this point. Now, what we're saying here is that week seven was what I asked last week, something about your family. And then we talked about, you know, looking at drawings and some of your printing activities. And then we looked at looking up and then looking down and looking in. What I'd like you to do today is don't worry about my identity because we're going to do, we'll do that next week when we've got a bit more time. What I would like you to do today is to see if you can actually recreate what we've done today in one of the creative activities of actually taking some environmental, I'll stop that now so you can, I can talk to you. Um, so what, if you would like to do something today, now remember in that first video, sorry, the middle video, um, where she talked about Andy Goldsworthy, and that was a teacher, she was sort of saying, look, you don't have to have Riley's backyard with flowers and trees and, and bark and wood. You can do it where you live, on your footpath. You can do it out in your backyard. You can, if you don't have a backyard or if you, you know, and certainly um, Andy Goldsworthy's, the whole exciting part about what he does is he does it in lots and lots of environments. He does it in deserts. He does it in rainforests. He does it out in the bush. He does it in the UK, in the cold. He does things in the warm. Um, so you don't need to do it. You don't need to actually have, you know, a, a huge backyard of, and, you know, resources. You can find things. You can get pebbles. You can put things together in a particular way. So I would like you to actually take a photograph for our Voices of Children project of your environmental sculpture that you've done. And then think about the sorts of concepts that you're going to talk to your child about. Are you going to talk to them about colour? Are you going to talk to them about contrast? Are you going to talk to them about texture? Um, are you going to talk to them about balance? Is it going to be a symmetrical design? Is it going to be asymmetrical? Are you going to use organic shapes? Are you going to use geometric shapes? So here's your big chance to actually communicate with your child, sit down, Print off, if you've got a computer, print off some of Andy Goldsworthy's sculptures so that you might use them to motivate them. And that, we'll see how we go next week. Wait for the email link and that's, we might finish up at that point. So I'm looking forward to next week. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.